oh man, if I'd have got my tactics better. Anyway, if my uncle was a bird, he'd be my aunt. So there's no point talking about ifs and buts. Is what it is. I just need to come back and do it again. The fan dance. Let me introduce you to, if you don't already know, to what the fan dance is by reading the opening paragraph of a welcome email I received after I entered and paid my entry fee. To gauge the importance we assign to mountain safety, a degree of context is required. In the summer of 2013, three soldiers attempting the reserve format of SAS selection died in the Brecon Beacons near the summit of Penny Fan, hence why it's called the fan dance Penny Fan. Two more candidates were hospitalised with serious heat-related illnesses. January 2013, an army captain died of hypothermia on the summit of Penny Fan. These men were all exceptionally fit, highly trained and had already undergone at least six months of navigational and mountain fitness training in addition to their existing military backgrounds. I include this email as an example of the communications participants, me included, received prior to this exact same event that they're describing in this communication. Plus I include it as a way of highlighting that this event, in their own words, is not a participation event. It is an authentic military timed race to the finish over a really, really tough course. The Fan Dance. If you don't know what the fan dance is or what it involves then please go and check out my first video that I made a few months ago now. I go into a lot more detail in that video. However, I will say that the fan dance is a 24k route march over Penny Fan in the Brecon Beacons. If anyone thinks that doing this in July is less of a challenge than any other time of year then I refer you back to the email I just read out. I'm recording. Okay, good. I should at some point do some vlogging, I think, considering I'm not gonna be able to do much of it in a minute. So we're on our way to the start line. I've got Tracy with me. I'm the only person. Yeah, they're just out for a while. I'm the only person that's turned up with his partner. Everyone else is obviously ex-military, you can tell. And I'm the only Wally from what from the people I've seen so far. Yeah, we've got a meal ticket. The fan dance is part of the SAS UK Special Forces selection test. Unbelievably, this is one of the last tests that the SAS candidates have to complete as part of a series of gruelling tests for selection. When they complete this test, they do so having already endured a week of training. All the organisers are definitely ex-military. <laughs> this is much of a, a challenge to get through the banter when you register as it is to complete the actual task. That's also not the end of it for them. They also have to beat four hours and 10 minutes. That's the cutoff time. And they have to come in under this time or they get booted off the selection process. That's it, they're not through. So four hours and 10 minutes is also the unofficial target for anyone entering into this event. The DS don't say this in the safety briefing or in any of the comms, as they probably don't want it to cause or be the reason for anyone taking unnecessary risk. Managed to get my, my Bergen sorted, a lot of faffing in the car. But yeah, on our way to the start line now to get ready to kick off, which starts in just under 30 minutes. I should also say, if it's not blindingly obvious, I'm also not carrying an issued rifle and I am fresh going into this, even though I did run 55K five days ago. I'm a hell of a lot fresher than the candidates on the real thing would be anyway. However, I do still need to march 24k over some of the toughest terrain I have ever traversed carrying a 45 pound Bergen on my back whilst also having to climb Penny Fan twice taking on Jacob's Ladder. I'll come on to Jacob's Ladder shortly. Forecast for today, heavy rain. It's stopped raining for the past 15 minutes. It's been torrential rain all morning, all night, all day yesterday, thunderstorms. However, we are in the beautiful Brecon Beacons on our way to the footpath that starts to trek up to Penny Fan. This is going to be fun guys, this is going to be fun. 
Now, the mandatory kit list for this event is extensive, and I mean extensive. And I have ensured that my bag is 35 pounds plus food and water. And I will say that this weight here that you can see on screen didn't yet include my food and water. When I eventually get going and after my official weigh-in with the DS at registration, my bag was just under 45 pounds. I made sure I didn't go over the minimum requirements. I didn't want to carry more than I had to. So I took my obligatory selfie with the famous red phone box that marks the start line of the event and the course. The footpath leading up to Penny Fan is just beyond the gate behind the phone box. And I will say that it's very misleading at this point as it looks simple, bordering on the mundane. Let me say now, in the calm before the storm, this course and this event is anything but simple and it is definitely definitely not mundane. We all stood around waiting for everyone to turn up. There was a mixture of clean fatigue, those doing this without 45 pound weight on their back, and those that were load bearing, me included. Good morning everybody. And Good morning. Welcome to the Fan Dance Challenge. This is a military themed endurance march. One which you have been a volunteer for this morning. So First and foremost, fucking well done for getting here. We had our safety briefing, and you can tell that there was a real focus on safety, both in the prep and build up of the event, the emails, and then again on the day by this safety briefing. It was also great to have a taste of military motivation. This works wonders in making me want to shift my arse. Special Forces, and this is the first time march we do on that course, and it's cheeky. You'll feel it before you go over that summit up there. Your calves will be blown and you'll be wondering why you signed up for it in the first place. Yeah, I guarantee you, <laughs> by the time you finish, go through that kid down by the red floor box and the old smiles. I will say, spoiler, this ex-SASDS who was doing the safety briefing didn't give me a cuddle at the end. I'm not even sure if he actually broke into a smile. This, however, might be because of his disgust of my effort levels on the day. You'll have to stay watching to the end to see if I actually finished this race or had to be rescued dangling off the side of Jacob's ladder. Just to hark back to the first email I got, I am not exceptionally fit, I am not highly trained, and I have not undergone any navigational or mountain fitness training in addition to my already non-existent military background. I am an ex-fatty who specialised in eating and drinking and now thinks that his above average fitness levels and weight loss is enough to get him through this ordeal. Welcome to this week's video. And we're off. It was a pretty muted start. Okay, we're off. Because there were so many of us, it was bottlenecked pretty much to the top of the first hill when it really kicked off. This section was like a lead out in a cycling race. Everyone just waiting to get going, but waiting for a space and the descent to do it. Okay, we've started. This starts a bit naughty. This is steep. Now, what I do have to compensate for my lack of special service experience is an abundance of overconfidence and blissful ignorance, as well as my OCD prep and training. I took this event, I took this event very, very seriously. I was then one of the first to start running, which was a good feeling, which kicked off all the other load bearers and everyone started scrambling forward. Opted to go on the grass. He's down running on those cobbles. Sit rep, feel good, downhill, try not to fall over. Just a quick interjection guys to say that I make weekly podcast episodes that can be accessed on my Patreon and Join pages. The podcast is called The Sit Rep Podcast and this week's episode is a deep dive into the fan dance where I talk through in detail my immediate post-race review feelings about the event. I have also uploaded a full-on extended vlog of this event that includes unseen footage not in this commentary video to both of my Patreon and Join pages. If you'd like to know more, listen to my view of the race in more detail or watch this challenge without this commentary then please head over to my patreon and join pages your support means a lot and this allows me to keep making videos like this one thank you and back to the video this is 
very undulating terrain, very uneven. I fall over on footpaths. God knows what's going to happen here. Right, we're descending into the valley and then we've got this climb. But that scramble or pace was soon shattered on the slow climb back up the other side of the valley where all I could do was keep moving forward with as much effort as I had in me. When you're carrying this much weight on your back, the climbs become leg breaking and thigh burning. We're just coming to the top. Terrain was making it almost impossible to have any kind of constant pace. One wrong placed foot or a slip with a 45 pound backpack and you can jar a knee, twist an ankle, or even pull a muscle. Okay, nowhere near the top. Nowhere near. We're at 700 meters. Don't forget, after we've got over and then down the other side, we've then got to do it again. Turn around, come back. I will say now that I expected the weight I was carrying, the Bergen, the climbing, the distance, the total distance, to be the biggest challenge on this route, but it was the terrain. The terrain was by far the hardest thing on this route. Most of it loose rocks and small boulders. Mud would have been better than some of these footpaths. Okay guys, I'm going to say it now. These boots are ripping my feet apart. I feel absolutely fine, other than my feet. I'm in shreds. Now, it was at this point, because I had pushed the pace on the inclines, I was starting to worry as I could feel that my heels were being ripped apart by the boots I was wearing. I knew that if I didn't stop to treat the already forming blisters, then they would turn into wounds rather than just blisters. Right at the top. It's like a penny fan. I should have stopped now to treat them with some kind of protection, and I would have on any other event. But then again, on any other event, I wouldn't be wearing these industrial strength military boots. However, I didn't stop because I decided on a dose of suck it up cupcake, an attitude that has served me well in the past. You'll do it again next year. You forget about it. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Shame is not you. It has been. I know. So hopefully, when you come when back, come back you I'll hold you to that. But, and this is a big but, on hindsight, this was a big mistake as the damage I was doing to my feet became a game changer, especially on the way back. If I showed you my feet on camera now, don't worry, I won't because it's pretty gross, then you would be questioning if I managed to finish this race at all. My heels looked like B-roll from the movie Saw. I can't do a lot of talking. This is the worst vlog ever. Right, we're at the top of Penny Fan. Fitness-wise, I feel absolutely fine. Legs are fine, back's fine. Bag, this bag, this bag's amazing, amazing. I'm pretty sure the bag does most of the work. But I shouldn't say that because I want to look, I want to look really hard and awesome. We've still got Jacob's ladder to come, um, which is coming up now. So we go down it, and then obviously we've got to come back up it. The only problem I'm facing is I've got blisters forming, bit bad ones as well. Some of the worst blisters I've had in a long time. All right, people have gone. I am tourist dinner. This is why I'm losing time now. I can pick up the pace here. I've lost loads of time. Now we're at the top. I've said we're at the top, I think, four times. Oh my God, now. Not stopping here, taking five minutes to repair the damage was a huge mistake, and one I won't be making again. I learned loads from completing this event. You all right, guys? Yeah, all right, terrific. I mean, if we're talking about not making huge mistakes, next time I choose my boots better and make sure that they're at the end of their life from an operational and comfort perspective. It's a rookie error I just won't be repeating. <sighs> Thank you.
Jacob's Ladder was no joke. The terrain and sheer steepness is what makes Jacob's Ladder so tough, both going down and then, of course, coming back up. I had to take this section carefully. The camera doesn't do the gradient justice. When you're carrying 45 pound of weight on your back, going straight down, especially straight down large steps, there is a real risk of toppling. And I didn't want to topple. I was prioritizing staying up. I also didn't know the course, so I didn't know the best line to take downhill. Now that I've completed it, I feel I could have gone faster on certain sections, but I think I'd still take the descent on Jacob's ladder cautiously. It was so steep. Falling here would be a medevac situation. There wouldn't be any getting back up and dusting myself off if I tripped. And if you're a viewer of my channel, you will know that I do enjoy the occasional trip and roll. Oh, shit. Oh. If I'm falling over with this on my back, I'm breaking arms or legs especially on this descent. You've done this before, haven't you? No. Oh, I was going to say, because you know the better way to go. Oh, oh no! It's you! Oh. You dude boy! <laughs> I watched you pack your bag, that's how I'm going! <laughs> well, nice to meet nice you! Nice to meet you. Let me give you a fist bump. Yeah, definitely Nice do. to meet you. Good man. Oh, here we go. This is where it all goes wrong. Properly uneven ground, proper trip hazards. How anyone's getting any pace up. I mean, some people are. Some people have gone. What a time they're making. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, I think, based on where I am in the pack, I'm pretty much mid pack at the moment, but people are starting to overtake me now. I thought the weighted, fully loaded Bergen, or the distance, or even the climbing, would be the hardest part of this challenge. For me, the hardest part was the trip hazard terrain. The only way I could describe it, it's like an SAS version of Wipeout. Anyone from the UK will know this show. Everything on this course was trying to trip you up and make you fall over. Based on that, I have no idea how far we've got to go to halfway, but based on that, I don't think I am uh, finishing anywhere near the four hours. It's like someone said, let's design a course where you have no chance of actually being able to run, and if you do try to run, you're at serious risk of injury. I can see, I can see why the SAS use this course as one of their test route marches. Unbelievably difficult. Nice bit. Nice bit. Where's that? Okay, okay. Sit rev. Got a job on. Got a job on. We're an hour and a half. Uh, hour and a half, we've just ticked over. Uh, you alright, mate? Yeah. Not really. No. <laughs> Not really. I love it. Unlike ultra events and marathons, when you do those events, everyone's so positive. It was like, no, I'm f <laughs> Gotta love, you gotta love the military, haven't you? Okay, right, bad news is the uh, load bearing people that I was trying to keep up with, the gaps spread out, so they're up there. They've got a good, probably four or 500 meters on me, um, but nobody passed me. The only people that have passed me are clean fatigue. So there are people that are basically fell runners. So no one with a Bergen, no one who's load bearing has passed me, which is good. Now, I just want to quickly say before all the ex-vets and servicemen and women that I know have watched some of my previous videos and commented, firstly, thank you for watching those videos and for commenting. I really appreciate it. I have the utmost respect for anyone attempting this event, either as part of their training in the military or entering into it like I am as, as a civilian. In post-edit now, I have the benefit of hindsight and the men and women I met on this event were awe-inspiring. This challenge was a great leveller and it really takes you to the edge, literally and metaphorically speaking, Jacob's Ladder, the organisers and directing staff were brilliant. I don't think I've had this level of banter, banter, on one event before. This event was one bloody hard challenge and one I didn't know if I could actually overcome. You all right, mate? Oh. Thanks, man. We're told at the start of this event, in no uncertain terms, that it's a solo timed endurance event, timed against the clock, and we're expected to push as hard as we can. This is a get it done and get it done as quick as you can race against time. 
There are two categories competing in this race, load bearing, I've already mentioned this, which is me and many others in this race, and then there is clean fatigue runners. They have a kit list, but it's nowhere near the weight expectation of the load bearers. They get to run this a lot faster. I was okay with being overtaken by clean fatiguers because I expect that to happen, but wanted to try and keep with the main pack of the load bearers, and I did that for the best part of the first half. I then passed this guy who has reached the halfway mark and is already on his way well done, back. Guys. Unbelievable skill and ability. Oh, fair play, mate. You're smashing it. When I got back to the car, Tracy told me his name and the time he completed it in. He finished this whole event, bearing in mind he's also fully load bearing, so he's carrying the same weight. He completed it in three hours and one minute. He was 61 seconds away from going sub three hours, probably because he was walking when he passed me. If he was running, he'd have beat the sub three. I'm joking. That was unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's smashing it. He looks it as well. I'll say now to anyone watching from the SAS, I know you are, if he isn't already in the gang, then you guys need to sign him up in the transfer window. If I was stuck in a zombie apocalypse, then I want him macheting his way through the hordes in front of me. Unbelievable speed and power. I think I'm more impressed that he hasn't tripped over going at that pace than his actual finish time. These trails are like something from a horror movie. <laughs> Well done, mate. Well What's your name? Craig. What's yours? Craig Ryan. Ryan. Well done, Ryan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Tough old day, Ryan. How old are you? 60. 60 years old. Load bearing. Load bearing. He's smashing it. I hope I'm able to do this when I reach your age. We then started moving down what I could only describe as a stream. At some points, the water was ankle deep and I was beyond caring about foot placement or keeping my feet dry anymore. They weren't dry at all. Nearly halfway. Literally all we're doing now is just running in a river. Just a stream, all the rainfall we've had. You all right, guys? It's now at this point that I was getting closer to the turnaround point and I was meeting fan dancers coming back the other way. The turnaround point marks the point where we need to register our existence with the DS and start the return march back to the finish line, back over Penny Fan and back up Jacob's Ladder. Well done, guys. Oh. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Well done, mate. I thought seeing those ahead of me passing me on the way back would be demoralising, but it wasn't. It was inspirational seeing men and women smashing it, and the camaraderie and positivity was amazing. Everyone I passed shouted words of encouragement, and I did the same. This is such a great event. You go, mate. Cheers, mate. You're doing great, You weren't wrong about that valley. I told you. <laughs> Don't tell me you don't get the whole way around. Hey? Yeah, don't get the whole way around. Not yeah. the whole way. I have absolutely no idea who those guys are. <laughs> I love it. The halfway point was a fence where we were literally told by the DS to touch it and fox trot Oscar away. I did reach the halfway point in just over two hours. I was still on for the SAS cutoff time that everyone wants to be, but to do so, I'd have to complete the second half at the same pace as the first. Now not being fresh with my heel injuries getting worse and with Jacob's ladder still to complete, that was probably an unrealistic expectation. In my head before the event, target number one was four hours and nine minutes. So sub the cutoff, that's a good target. Always aim for the stars and you might hit the moon. Target two, sub five hours, that was the second target. And then target number three, if, the, if this is if the wheels fell off, was just to get the job done. Hold right, on mate. Good effort buddy. <sighs> Okay, halfway, gotta do it again. It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain at the halfway point, exactly what I need. But yeah, halfway done. I will do. I know I will. This is Craig, the guy that I was walking with previously. This is Craig telling me off for not sorting out the injuries I was causing to my feet, and he was not wrong. 
As we were marching together previously, I told him about the pain in my heels and he was telling me something that I already knew. I needed to stop and fix it. But unfortunately, I entered into a fixed mindset that I often do on these endurance events. I decided to swallow a can of testosterone and powered on. Unsurprisingly, this, as it turns out, was a huge mistake. The massive blisters that had already formed on both of my heels, halfway up the first hill, had now turned from being blisters into full blown wounds. Every step was an ordeal. The pain was shooting up my leg with every heel strike. I had unfortunately gone from thinking about the event to now thinking about the pain in my feet. The worst part was the climbing. Every climb I had to endure, I had to put a knee over my foot and it elongated my Achilles and my heel, meaning both my heels were now rubbing on the inside lining of the industrial boots I was wearing. They were now boring a hole into my skeleton. Okay, right, now we've got head back head back and uh, over penny fan and done that's it easy a bit of rain never hurt anyone let's do this this is this is grim back up this long trek and we've got to walk through that river we've then we've got to climb Jacob's ladder um, get to the top of that which if I'm honest with you you're walking up steps. The worst bit is going down. I'm not falling over walking up. These two guys, I'm trying to pace them. That was his mate catching him. He stopped to change his shoe or something. This is where you lose time on the flats. Everyone's slow on the climb. But it's when it's flat, there's no trip hazards. Oh, God, I've got it, mate. Gone. Go Cheers, mate. Yeah, throw it. Rain can do one. Doing well, mate. Smashing it. This mistake cost me target number one, obviously. For me to hit the selection cutoff, I had to be in full swing. I had to have everything working perfectly. I wasn't in full swing. Everything wasn't working perfectly. Target two and even target three finishing was now on the line because of the decision to power on. Okay, guys. We're coming up to the foot of the start of Jacob's ladder, full transparency. I've lost, I've lost time. Um, so I smashed that first, the first half, but I've lost time now. So I had to stop and sort two blisters. My feet are just drenched, soaked through. And rather than power, well, I did power through. I should have fixed them in the first half, but I powered through. And then, uh, yeah, blisters have got pretty bad. So I had to stop and do, treat them, I had to do something. Otherwise, I would have amputated my foot. I'd have been walking on stubs by the end of it. I then took a slice of humble pie and eventually conceded and stopped on the side of the path. Unfortunately for me, I could only patch my feet up. The rain meant that any form of proper dressing was impossible. So all I could do was treat them as best I could and hope for the best. Yes, yes. I'm going to say now, they're hardcore. Hardcore. And the fact that you have to wear these boots just to operate makes you hardcore. Now, I'm gonna answer the question on my thumbnail now. How tough are the SAS? No need to wait till the end. The SAS are hardcore. The fact that they do this under severe time constraint, carrying their rifle and after a week of full on beasting makes them hardcore. They're pretty damn tough. Anyone that does this course or anyone that has done this course are also pretty tough. <sighs> Gotta to climb up that now. Start the pain now. Yeah. I'll have that rush of adrenaline knowing that the worst part of the whole event is climbing Jacob's Ladder. It's not steep. Uh, no, it is steep. Let me turn it back. It's not high. It doesn't feel high. I don't get vertigo on it. You can see why it's called Jacob's Ladder. The footpath's like a ladder. Come on, we've got the funding now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to take my mind off looking at that. That, I've got to climb this. I've said this already, this camera, especially in wide view, just doesn't do justice to the gradient on this part of the course. The floor is loose shell, easy to slip on, plus the paving or the slate that is used to build this ladder type path, this section, is jagged. As I mentioned, if I tripped here, I wasn't just going down, I was going down hard and probably staying down. So I was treating this part of the course with the respect it deserved. 
On hindsight, I wished I trained more on uneven terrain. I completed the Yorkshire Three Peaks several weeks ago with the backpack, which did wonders for my endurance and helped with navigating the inclines and descents. But the terrain here is very loose and there are sections where it's like playing hopscotch, jumping from one boulder to the next, hoping you don't miss and turn an ankle. I say turn an ankle, probably break an ankle. Training on terrain like this for a good time is a must and something I wish I did more of. What have you? Not far now. You alright guys? Yeah, that's right. That's fun, wasn't it? Good views. Top. Top of Penny Fan. Top of Jacob's Ladder. Done. Jacob, I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Jacob's ladder is... I can't even talk. Jacob's ladder is tough. Exactly four hours 30. We've got 30 minutes to do two miles to come in under five. And we're just walking over boggy ground. I don't even know where the path is. We're just bog. I had 30 minutes to jog three miles. I thought it was two because the fella that had climbed Jacob's ladder with me said it was two, but my watch said it was three. So in any case, I had 30 minutes to finish this course in a time that I'd be happy with. I'd love to do sub five, but I don't think I can. My feet are fucked. My feet are in a bad way. And everything I'm doing now is jeopardizing Race of the Stones in a week. Because my feet, my feet are fucked. My feet are broken. I keep swearing. I'm swearing so much. It's the only word I can use that best describes how I feel. To use a World War II term, my feet were now foobard. The pain was outrageous, but I desperately wanted to get that sub five hours, so I kept running or shuffling. I'm back. back. I'm back. I'm, I'm trying to run. I'm trying to run. Oh, yeah. too You're too kind. <laughs> hey, mate. Oh, yeah. I've... Yeah. I've gone all that way about falling over. I'm not going to yeah, do it now. I'm <laughs> trying to run. I'm trying to run. I will say that the directing staff, the organisers, the officials were fantastic. Their no nonsense but calm approach was spot on. I've got to be honest. The email is very aggressive. <laughs> Army aggressive. I like it. However, they've been really good, good bands. The uh, organisers, brilliant. Well, well organised. This is a great event. And if you don't balls it up, like I did with wearing boots you haven't broken in properly, then uh, yeah, I'm definitely coming back to smash this out again. This I think is how events should be organised. Imagine doing park runs organised by ex-SAS directing staff. That would be amazing and that would be an awesome ITV show. <laughs> this terrain was now mostly mud and bog off trail and trip hazard central or streams of mud on trail. This didn't help my already poor pace. I will say at this point, for anyone thinking this looks easy, I know my enthusiastic vlogging and effortless marching makes it look like a scene from Wish You Were Here, but as Tracy stood on the finish line waiting for me, she got chatting with the Geordie ex-SASDS, and he told her that during this event, the day before, I've already mentioned this, five load bearers were hospitalised because of hypothermia. This is a tough event, guys. This is really, really, really hard. Only in Wales when it will pour down and be sunny at the same time. So it's just teasing me. I'm drenched anyway, no point moaning. Last climb. I also know that several on today's event that started had to withdraw during the march. I just need to get over this. And then it's the phone box and the finish line. How tough are the SAS? I'm gonna say now, they're pretty tough. I'm gonna give them that big tick. You get my seed of approval, guys. Um, this is a tough gig. Sub four hours, this, Jesus. If you can do this sub four hours, you are something special. If I'd have got my tactics better. Anyway. If my uncle was a bird, he'd be my aunt. So, there's no point talking about ifs and buts. It is what it is. 
I just need to come back and do it again. I'm already haven't finished and I'm already talking about doing it again. This was pretty tough guys. This is pretty tough. I take my hats off to the SAS. I take my hats off to anyone that's done this course. These guys are monsters. This event is not for the faint hearted and one really hard challenge that I needed to overcome. It nearly broke me doing it as well. I 100% want and need to return to this event at some point. Okay, all right, I can see the finish line. I can see the phone box. Uh, and I've lost the toenail. I just felt my toenail ping. But the finish line, I can see the finish line guys. Forget about that. Let's look at the finish line. If I can lean down some more, lose a bit more weight, become a bit stronger, hit the gym, train with the Bergen on uneven terrain, and obviously buy a much better, more flexible pair of boots because they're too rigid, then I've definitely got a better time in me. Whether that time is sub four hours and 10 minutes, I'm not sure, but I definitely think I've got a sub five hour in me. So, with Tracy clapping me over the line, she is always by my side, clapping me over any finish line that I attempt. Yeah, and with yeah. a group of very impressed DSing staff. <sighs> ah. What's your number, mate? Thank two, you. Two, three. Uh, two, two, three. Two, two, three, yeah. Brian? Yes. I think he is. <sighs> <sighs> was it good? Yeah. That was no, no nonsense, that route, innit? I crossed the finish line in, and I had to check the official email for this. I crossed the finish line in a rather lukewarm five hours and 21 minutes. Unfortunately, guys, I'm sorry to say that I did not make it into the SAS. I'm sorry to have let you all down. As I finished the race, yes. crossed through the gate beside the red telephone box and asked the ex-Special Forces DS member if he had run it as well. You, did you run it? Were you the guy? No, I didn't run it. It was because for some strange reason I thought he had and wanted to say to him, well done, even though he was fully dressed. I just assumed he'd just done it really easily. Yeah. Are you going to smile then? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Really good event. Really good. I received my finishers patch, took my photo for Instagram, link in the description if you want to follow me on Instagram, and I then waddled my way back to the car, no doubt with the awe of all the ex-SAS and Special Forces contingent that were patiently waiting for the rest of the field to finish. Now I will say, joking aside, that anyone that did pull out or was withdrawn from this event didn't appear on the final results, and according to those final results, 142 men and women finished this event on the day I did it. 69 of them were clean fatigue and 73 of them were load bearers. I finished the fan dance 48th out of 73 load bearers. Am I happy with this? That's the question I'm asking myself now. Am I happy? Not really, if I'm honest. Obviously, I'm happy to have finished based on how bad my feet were feeling. It was an ordeal. And 2018 Ryan had no chance of finishing this event, let alone finishing mid-pack-ish. However, I know there were sections I should have powered through faster on. The boots destroyed my feet, meaning that my pace and ability to bend my feet into certain positions that allow me to climb more effectively was significantly compromised. All this means I definitely had a much better time in me. I am justifying my lukewarm result. Say again. Uh, so uh, just as you was coming in the last bit, the man was counting how many's left. So there was 26 people with Bergens still to come in. 14 clean and yesterday at uh, one red line across, which means they've been withdrawn, withdrawn for yeah. whatever Medical reason. reasons. Um, and then yesterday, five people were hospitalised with hypothermia. Jesus. Uh, but the fastest yesterday was three hours 20. Today was three hours. Yeah, Almost we saw exactly. him. Yeah, we saw him. Beast. Absolute yeah. beast. As I record this, it's only four days after completing this event and I feel absolutely fine. As you can tell, I'm sat in my chair rather than stood up as I normally am in my videos because I'm absolutely fine. The DS would say that this is another indicative sign that I didn't push myself as hard as I could, as hard as I could have on the day. But my feet, oh my God, my feet are destroyed, guys. I did film them. I was going to put that in the video, but I'm not. I've decided not to include it because everyone I've shown the video has winced and I'm not going to uh, lose subscribers because of it. It has unfortunately also meant that I've not been able to complete this week's Race to the Stones Ultra Marathon that I had booked for this weekend as, yeah, I just couldn't, my feet wouldn't make it 100k. And I was really looking forward to it. I'm really annoyed that I was, wasn't able to complete that event. So in conclusion, this event, the fan dance, is not one to be sniffed at. The route, the terrain, especially the terrain, which is brutal, is a really, really tough challenge. 
and I'm very pleased to have been part of it and to have completed it. Will I return next year? Maybe. I don't know. It's a year off. I haven't really thought about it. I'm still processing the one I've just done. But I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the planning and the prep and the build-up. I didn't enjoy the boots. I enjoyed the training for it, going for long runs and shuffles, carrying a heavy backpack, which was a new way of training. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to know more about the day, about the fan dance, how I endured it, my feelings afterwards, then I record a weekly podcast on my Patreon and Join pages. Links for these are in the description. Head over there to support me and have a listen. Episode 4, How Tough Are The SAS? is the episode in question spoiler they're pretty pretty damn tough thank you for watching see you in the next one